So, I was working at this coffee shop and in comes my boyfriend's childhood best friend. I'm going to tell you one time that I do not like this girl. She is at the bottom trench of my list of people. Why don't I like her? It's because she can convince my boyfriend to do whatever he wants. And I get it. They've grown up together, so he trusts her. But I don't trust the witch. Anyway, she walks in and comes straight at me. Mind you, I'm busy sorting the cups and putting supplies into order. I do not have cashier duty. She says hi, and without asking me how I'm going or anything resembling cordial manners, she orders a caramel latte to go. She flicks her braids over her shoulders and digs into her purse and hands me a $5 bill. Now, usually, anyone who does this to me would get an earful, but because she rants to my boyfriend about everything, I humor her. Is that all? I say. And no, that isn't all. She proceeds to add cookies to the mix and then tells me to keep the change. What change? She's gone over by two bucks. Two bucks I have to pay for because if I tell her, she's going to say, like always, that she doesn't have any more change. To this day, the witch owes me $48.68. And yes, I'm counting. Keeping a straight face, I do what she asks, and minutes later, I return with her order. She thanks me and leaves. I went home and I tell my boyfriend about what happened. We live together. And all he can say was thanks for putting up with her. I remind him how much she owes me, and he tells me that he'll pay it back. He's been saying that for three weeks straight. Now Friday nights are our time, and we either spend it inside or outside. Tonight, it's inside watching a movie. I go to wash up and decide to put on something sexy, and when I return, he's on the phone. I motion for him to get off so we can start the movie, but he tells me that he's speaking with her. An hour later, he's still on the phone. I get mad, because he's paying the entire rent, and I don't do much. I've allowed him to do whatever he wants. I'm basically a freeloader, and that's probably why he can behave the way he does. But tonight, I got so mad that I organized a date with my next boyfriend when he texted me. I got dressed and left. The bastard didn't even ask where I was going— he just waved me goodbye while cuddled up under a blanket on the couch. I returned earlier in the morning after mind-blowing sex and actually feeling wanted. I took a shower and crawled into bed like it was nothing. I didn't think my boyfriend cared what I was doing or why I came home that late until he turned over and asked if I enjoyed what he paid Sean to do. My mind hazed after that. Actually, all I can remember is flashing police lights and cold metal around my wrists. I must be dreaming. I had to be. No way in hell would my boyfriend do such an atrocity, that he would pay someone to get with me. I knew I was dreaming because dreams jump around, skipping out pertinent details. Why am I being handcuffed? Why the police? Why the blood? Nothing made sense. Patiently, I let the dream drone on. I'll wake up, eventually. I just have to play along. So it's been over six months, and it seems like I'm not waking up from this dream. I still want to believe it, but I need to come to terms that I am sitting in a psychiatric facility, reading a book donated by my assigned therapist. I have no recollection of my past after sleeping with Sean, and my psychologist tells me that I may have experienced dissociative amnesia. I still don't understand, but that's what she came up with why I cannot remember a thing. Apparently, I had bludgeoned my boyfriend to death using the bedside lamp. I've been cleared of criminal charges because of my history of childhood abuse and high stress, but I don't think I can ever get over the fact that I murdered my boyfriend in cold blood. Now I'm trapped here at this facility for God knows how long without anyone coming to save me. But do I really need saving after what they said I did? Probably not. I guess no more cheap lattes and free cookies for his bestie. What a shame.